all right hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you please invite your friends and share the link with whoever you like uh, and don't forget to download our videos and you can divide them and make them smaller if they are long I will try to keep it small today uh, we have a Muslim Abdul who sent me a message in uh, in Facebook and this guy he keeps saying to me uh, you know the coward the one who hide behind the computer I, I don't know who is the coward my friend your prophet your prophet he run to the Jews which is the city of Medina if he is a man he stay in the city of Mecca and he will never leave your prophet is the one who run all the way to Ethiopia to the king of the Christians bowing down in front of him like a rabbit asking for refuge and asylum who is the coward Me, myself, I go and I do seminars in prison. If you watch my videos, always I say, whoever want to invite me to the church, invite me. And you know, in church people, they can come. Doors are open. I went in the Philippines to the most dangerous cities. The city where uh, it's called Marawi, the center of the terrorist. And I did a seminar and I exposed Muhammad big deal. And Muslims were there. So who is the coward? I, if, if I don't show myself in the camera, I mean, who care? I don't, I don't like to do that. Why will do that? I'm not interested in being famous by face. And, you know, I, I'm not here to praise myself and, you know, get my own glory. Because, first of all, the Messiah said, and he taught us something special about not to be known. If you do something good, don't speak of it. If you give with the right hand, don't let the left hand know. So this is for me an extra blessing. But when I have, if I have to go and people see me and people, they, you know, tons of churches I've been to and Muslims, they were there. So my friend, we fear no one. And you are the one who is in fear. And because you cannot answer me, you have nothing to say against me except of what is your face? Why you, why you want my face? Isn't it, isn't it TV haram? Isn't it camera haram? Isn't it your prophet who said the one who do what the kuffar do, he is one of them? So suddenly now the camera is halal for you? Isn't it this is the product of the kuffar? Now he said to me, and I will show you what he sent me. Uh, What is the coward? You cannot be even a real man. Talk in front of a live audience to show your face. It is true sign of coward. Hmm. The coward is the one who don't dare to speak about a man. His name is Muhammad, and he say loud and clear that Muhammad is a scumbag. Because, you know, in case you do not know, if you want to know who I am, it's very easy to know. Should I tell you how? This is how stupid you are. A man who wrote nine books exposing your false prophet, he is no coward. It is you Muslims who coward. And you are trying to tell me that we Muslims are terrorists, and this is why you are afraid we will kill you, right? Is that what you are trying to say? Well, thank you very much. But we fear no one, my friend. And keep it dreaming. I am not like your prophet, who he is a coward. When the war happened, he hide between the legs of Aisha. Should I tell you? Should I remind you? Should I show you a reference? The coward Muhammad, he asked his cousin at the age of nine to sleep in his bed according to Muslims so he can run away. Do you accept your cousin to danger, to danger a child so he can run away? What if those people open the door of his room? They want to kill him according to the Muslim story, which is a big fat lie. And they put their knives in this kids. He's covering himself with the blanket, thinking that this is Muhammad. Or Muhammad, you don't care. For he is a coward, just so you want to save his ass. Even Isa in the Quran is a coward. The Muslim Isa, he asked one of his followers, who want to die for me so I can run away? Even your God, Allah, is a coward. And we can prove it.
when people they want to debate Allah what Allah he says to them I will show you an example of Allah the coward if we go here we will find the following people they keep challenging Muhammad for a miracle okay all those verses in the front of us is a stupid verses about the coward Allah for he does not exist people they can keep challenging him to show his face you see this is God now this is not a Christian Prince the coward Allah and here the face by the way they don't want to see the see the real face of Allah no they are asking him if you are if your God is God and if you have if you are a messenger of God why you why you don't have a Miracles. Do you know what Muhammad said to them? Look what Allah told me. Read and laugh. They say, Why not a sign sent down to him from his Lord? Say, The unseen is only for Allah <laughs> to know. Then wait, wait ye. I too wait with you, ye. What wait? I wait, 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 you, we. What we, we, we. People are keep asking for a miracle. What wait ye? I wait with you ye. How ye ye? What unseen? They knew that you are unseen. And they, this is why they are asking you, okay, you are saying you are a prophet of God. How come your God don't give you a miracle? The answer is wait. I wait with you. Is that an answer of God? Okay, Abdul, you are asking me why you don't show yourself. I will say to you, wait. I will wait with you. Please take a cheers. We have to wait. Hmm? This is an answer of God. How come Jesus did not say, okay, it's coming, it's coming, just wait, wait. And how does verse work with other verse in the Quran where Allah He said He refrained from sending miracles? He refrained or we should wait? For how long we will wait? So the coward Allah, in order to say that he cannot, like to because he's a coward, he can he, he don't have the courage to say, I cannot do it. Just wait. He is the Lord of the unseen. What does that mean? Well, what does that mean? What who 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 cares if he is the Lord of the unseen or the Lord of the of the scene? People asking for miracles. Where is the miracles? Wait, I wait with you. And then the Quran says in different verse that Allah refrain from sending miracles. Okay, so should we wait or we should not wait? Isn't it, this is a contradiction? Should we wait or no? 1759 and we refrain from sending signs miracles but the other verse says wait hmm? who is the coward here the coward is the one who claimed to be God God he in in one word he can make a miracle I mean what is hard about this request why it's so easy in the time of Jesus Jesus have a miracle every five seconds and the time of Muhammad he spent his life saying to them wait I will wait with you then wait ye I too wait with you oh, oh really this is this is an answer what happened Allah was in the kitchen he's busy So my friend, it's you who is a coward, who cannot answer me. And me, myself, I go to Muslim countries. I go to the most, the, the most dangerous places where Muslims are, the terrorists. 
and yet I expose your prophet with no mercy the coward is the one who don't dare to answer us when people they show themselves in the camera exposing Islam what you will say to them what 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 the Muslim they say about David Wood he is a stupid okay he show himself in the camera so now he they have no excuse to say why you don't show yourself in the camera right so it doesn't matter what you do if you show yourself they will say he don't speak Arabic okay if you speak Arabic they say he don't show himself in the camera you show yourself in the camera he said your English is funny you say yourself and you, you you speak good English and you speak good Arabic and you show yourself in the camera they will say to you is a liar it doesn't matter what you do because at the end of the day they cannot answer right uh, we have a guy his name Ahmed Ahmed mr. Ahmed what do you like to call me do you like to call me to tell me what Jesus said look like you are an expert in what Jesus said do you feel like calling me my friend hey, by the way when I say the Muslim my friend you know that in Islam there is no Muslims they have no friends this is just a figure of speech Muslims don't accept to be friends to non-muslims and you know that but we say my friend it's just a figure of speech to be friendly but we know that muslims will never take us as a friends quran chapter 5 verse 51 quran chapter 3 verse number 98 quran uh, chapter 9 verse 23 all of them even your even you cannot take a friend from someone he is your brother really brother even your father from your family you cannot be a friend with him if you are a muslim unless he is a muslim like you because Islam is an evil religion now the one who is speaking about what Jesus said and even your Bible refute you what about you call me your my friend and refute us do you wish to do so do you wish to do so the deceiver okay the guy did he say deceiver did he say deceiver okay let me show you the biggest deceiver in the world the Muslims believe with no shame that Allah he made someone look like Jesus in the cross and why he did that because Allah the coward he cannot save him without making someone look like him I mean the Jews are there he cannot get in so what Allah he did the Jews they said we killed him Jesus the son of Mary Allah said to them no you did not kill him uh, 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 I made him appear to you like Jesus <laughs> based in this verse Allah he deceived the Jews and the Christians and everybody who was witnessing that crucifixion which means Allah is the one who created the Christianity by deception he is a devil you see when the Muslim they make fun of you for, of us for believing in Jesus to be crucified they are not being honest because it was Allah who deceived us and make us see Jesus in the cross this is what the Quran is saying the Quran witness that there was a crucifixion and there was someone look exactly like Jesus So what is my fault if I believe in what was in the cross? Based on what the Quran teach, you cannot believe what you see. But the Quran says, in case of adultery, you have to bring four witnesses. How many witnesses they saw Jesus in the cross there? Thousands? You see the hypocrisy and the stupidity of this cult? Allah the coward, he could not save Jesus from being crucifixion except by making somebody look like Jesus, a clone. Actually, in one of the stories, Allah, he made 17 apostles of Jesus look like Jesus. So the Jews, they entered the room, they found 17 Jesus. Hey, who's Jesus of you? I mean, what the heck? 17 Jesus? And then the Jews, they outsmart Allah and they said, hello, listen, listen, listen. If you don't tell us who is the true Jesus of you, Huh? We will kill you all. So Isa said to them, Oh, oh, it's not working. Who of you will say I am the true Jesus? <laughs> 17 Jesus? Are you sure there are 17 Jesus? 
I mean, Allah, he was able in a second to make 17 Jesus, but he could not make 17 chicken to Muhammad. What's wrong with this Jesus in Islam? Even when somebody want to kill him, nobody can kill him. Muhammad, he, he died like a rat by poison. Why Allah did not make 17 stomach to Muhammad? Hmm? The woman, she killed Muhammad. Why Allah did not make 17 Muhammad? This is your prophet reporting that he died by poison. Are you saying to me, are you going to say Muhammad is a liar? Say it. Muslims, are you following? Allah, he made 17 Jesus to save Jesus. Okay, we get that. Why Allah did not make 17 Muhammad to save Muhammad? What's wrong with Muhammad? Muhammad is not from a good family, so Allah don't care for him. Muhammad was like a, a homeless guy for Allah. He don't care for him. Muhammad is not from a good noble uh, 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 Muslim. You say that Muhammad is from a noble family. Nobody even want to marry Muhammad because he was not from a good family. To the point, the father of Khadija, he took his sword to go and launch a war in the family of Muhammad. After he heard that his daughter Khadija and Muhammad, they made him drunk to make him agree to marry her. Actually, he did not agree. The story of Khadija is disgusting. Khadija, she invited her father and the people of Quraysh for a dinner. And she served wine and whiskey and seven up and beer. Take beer. And then after all of them, they got drunk. She changed the clothes of her father. So when he woke up in the morning, he said to her, why am I wearing those clothes? She said, you don't remember? He said, no. He said, she said, yesterday you with me to Muhammad. He said, no, I did not. She said, yes, you did. <laughs> and this is imagine is written in Islamic books. The one who is reporting the stories are not the Jews, are not the Christians, are not the Hindus, are not the enemies of Islam. Those are Muslims reporting how Muhammad, the fraud, his marriage is a fraud. The first thing he did in his life is a fraud. Even his marriage is a fraud. So I'm not surprised to see that the fraud Allah is making someone look like Jesus 17 Jesus now this is not our topic for today the ritual in Islam and the ritual in Christianity this guy he said to me here uh, in fact it's not false doctrine uh, the main fact it's not biblical you just answer yourself you idiot you see it's like you see guys how how Muslims are so smart he just answered himself any doctrine you, you just say it false doctrine and you say it's the fact it's not biblical <laughs> do you see it did you see it he said hold on hold on the most stupid believe somebody had never had uh, ever heard of the Trinity the false doctrine the the main fact it is not biblical okay I mean, this guy is, is, is smart. It's not biblical. So he just admitted anything is not biblical is false. So is Muhammad. Muhammad is not biblical. Same time, if you are a person who don't believe in the Trinity, so why you practice the Trinity? Everything in Islam is based on the Trinity. How many names of Allah you say before you pray? Three times. Allahu Akbar, you say it three times. You wipe your hand three times. Your left hand three times. Your elbow. You, you, know, you blow your nose three times. You blow your mouth three times. And you are telling me about Trinity? Everything in Islam about Trinity. When the angel came to Muhammad and he squeezed him, how many times he squeezed him? Three times. Why? Is that a Trinity of activation? I mean, the angel could not squeeze Muhammad four times. Why not two? What about seven? Hmm? I challenge any Muslim to tell me why the angel, he squeezed Muhammad three times. Anyone knows? Isn't it going to be beautiful more if the angel, he squeezed Muhammad like ten times? Twelve. A Muslim is speaking about the Trinity? 
Why Allah he say Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Allah Ar Rahman Ar Rahim three names why three names what about four and why Allah have 99 names which is multiply of number three what about 100 names even Muhammad he have 99 names Allah have 99 names Muhammad have 99 names because they are equal for Muhammad is Allah You see the madness of this religion? They they accuse you of a trinity, claiming that they have one God. The fact Muslim don't have one God. And let me show you what the Muslim they show you to prove to you that we have one God. But they don't. Now we can prove it very easy. Oh, sorry, there's no screen. Uh, it's my fault again. I need to uh, I need to get a new screen, uh, like to to connect it to this one. So, because now it's the, you know, the monitor is very busy. You know what I mean? This is why I have many windows hiding behind. All right. Yeah, this is what this guy, he said. You see it? And then he says the Halloween. Who told you that Halloween is a Christian, you idiot? What the Halloween have to do with the Christianity? And if the Christmas is false for you is a pagan right why you muslim celebrate christmas and why you muslim celebrate halloween and why you muslim celebrate easter and why you muslim celebrate valentine i will tell you why because you muslims you have no happiness in your life so you're trying to find any kind of happiness anything this is why in the month of ramadan all of you muslims you flee as a sex tourist to East Asia, to Thailand, to Philippines, you name it. Number one customers for bars is Muslims. Regarding the Christmas, for us as a Christians, every day is a Christmas. Why? For we are, nobody can celebrate the birth of Jesus because simply, the the celebrating the birth again of somebody is not uh, really an accurate thing because uh, when somebody celebrate his birth what day is your birth that day is gone will never come back for us we celebrate the birth of Jesus every day every day for us is a christmas but do you know what christmas mean you have no idea and let me show you that Allah, your God, He celebrated the day of Jesus' birth. Allah Himself, every day He celebrated the birth of Jesus. If we go in the Quran, we will find the funny Allah saying the following. And now He will cry for seeing this. This website sometime is not good. All right, that's a change. Allah Himself celebrating the birth of Jesus, the life of Jesus, and the death of Jesus. Chapter 19, verse number 33. Read and love. So peace on me the day I was born born the day that i die and the day that i shall raised up to life again who is the one is talking here is that a word allah allah saying or this is uh, somebody why peace on jesus the day he is born why there is no verse in the quran saying peace on muhammad the day he was born Peace on Muhammad the day he died. Peace on Muhammad the day he is resurrected. Any Muslim can tell us? Why all this peace on Jesus? And who is the one who is giving this peace to Jesus? Allah? Ah, for sure, Allah, right? So what is special about Jesus? That there is peace from Allah coming to Jesus in his birth. Peace from Allah when he is die. Peace from Allah when he is resurrected. 
in the case of Muhammad there's nothing there's no peace when he die he die by poison and now he is in the grave and waiting for resurrection and he was not promised peace in his death in his birth in his resurrection so why Allah celebrating all of those things about Jesus you know do you know what you what what, what, what it's mean to say peace on me do you know what does that mean that's mean Jesus his birth and his death and his resurrection will not go through judgment day peace he got the pass guys are you do you understand what I'm saying all mankind they don't have a pass they will go through judgment day Jesus before his birth he is a person who have peace in his birth he had peace in his death he had peace in his resurrection he have pass he is out standing person from all mankind and no one like him why as you see Allah celebrating the birth of Jesus Christmas the death of Jesus is a Christmas too because still it's a peace day it's a happy day for Jesus his death mean nothing for he have peace he pass death mean nothing to Jesus according to the Quran and resurrection is peace he will not suffer from anything he will not you know the Muslim they believe when you die there's two angels will come to you and they will bring a hammer with them and they will ask you three questions about the Easter isn't it you Muslim celebrate the Easter you idiot don't you Muslim celebrate the Easter what is the biggest Eid for the Muslims? Anyone can tell me? What is the biggest celebration holiday for the Muslims? It's called the Day of Al-Adha. Let us type it for you in English and in Arabic. Al-Adha. Okay. What al Adha mean? Who is the Muslim? Tell me what al Adha mean. Sacrifice. Do you believe it? The Muslim, they have a day. The, ho the biggest holiday they have is the day of sacrifice. Okay, why? Why you have sacrifice? The funny, there's tons of videos of Muslims saying we Muslim don't have ritual, pagan rituals. And they say, as an example, pagans, they sacrifice blood for God. You big fat liar. In the day of Al-Adha, millions of animals are slaughtered in Islamic countries. And all of it is sacrifice. This is why the day is called the day of sacrifice. It's not good Christmas. The name of the occasion itself is sacrifice. You sacrifice for what reason? The liars they say to European and Western who have no education about Islam that you know is it is it pagan to believe that God he asked you to sacrifice a human being like Jesus so he will forgive you isn't it this is a pagan ritual this is not a ritual for us and God he did not kill anyone you Muslims are a bunch of liars who have no idea what are you talking about when you make a lie try to make it better because the Christians believe that even Jesus he don't want to be crucified but he knew the future and he don't want to change it let your will be done and it is not his will it was the decision of the Jews the Jews they don't want Jesus anymore so they decide 
we need to get rid of this man and all of us we knew how the story even the Quran report that the Jews they came and they say we killed Jesus so it's not Jesus committing suicide to give a sacrifice the way the Muslims they claim is we bring Jesus and he put him in the like uh, in a table and we kill him and that is sacrifice this is not what happened it is you Muslims who sacrifice for God if we go in the Quran we will find how the Muslims and the reason Muslims they do sacrifice the sacrifice is mentioned in the Quran in two stories anyone remember anyone remember what is the two stories the story of Kabil and Cain uh, Kabil and, uh, and uh, Abil and uh, about both of them they want to have sex with their sisters one of them she have across eyes those are Muslim Abdul the children of Adam they are Abdul fighting over a girl when Adam he start having babies according to the stories his wife Eve she give a twin each time male and female male and female twin and then Adam he let look how conservative Adam is support this is not incest now so Adam he make the twin the first twin the male he married from the second twin female if, if deep that's deep but what happened that Cain and Abel when they have two sisters each one of them and supposedly they will marry each other sisters twin one of them she have a problem she have a cross eyes and now they are fighting over the girl who have no cross eyes I don't want to marry a girl with a cross eyes she will make me dizzy I'm just joking so Allah he told them give me sacrifice and the both the children provide sacrifice one of them he provide vegetation and the other one he provide beef or sorry sheep Allah he is not a vegetarian he like blood and he accepted only the bloodshed any Muslim here he have something to say hmm? if you don't believe me let us go to the Quran chapter 5 verse number 27 tell them tell them the story of the children of Adam who present the sacrifice to Allah it was accepted from one but not from the other okay which one he Allah he accept the blood what about I can show you the details of the story which is very funny and very stupid what about the story of the sacrifice of Abraham have you ever heard of such an arg argument Muslim they say to you why God he need to give I mean if Jesus is God if Jesus is God how God need to give a sacrifice to himself how many time you heard this before guys how many time you heard the Muslim saying if if Jesus is God so why God need to give sacrifice for himself they say that to you right well the Quran says that Allah he gave a sacrifice to to himself read carefully with me uh, 
Chapter 37, verse number 107. Allah, He provide a sacrifice. Do you see it? Allah asked for sacrifice. Allah gave Himself sacrifice. Explain to me that, Muslims. As long you reject that God, and you say it's a stupid that God He gave a sacrifice to Himself. Well, isn't it? This is a story in the Quran. Allah do not have a sacrifice. Allah is giving sacrifice. This is, it is different. Allah, He is giving sacrifice, and He called His sacrifice a mighty sacrifice. What is mighty about it? Right? The Muslims, they say to us <laughs> that believing that Jesus sacrificed himself to God is stupid because if he is God, how God gives sacrifice to himself? Well, the story is in your Quran. Allah, he ordered Abraham to kill his son as a testing. This is what the Muslims believe. Okay. Abraham, he brought his son and his son was obedience. Some Muslim scholars they say the son was Isaac. Some Muslim scholars they say the son was Ishmael. Anyway, we're not making a difference, at least for now. Before Abraham he do that, Allah he told him, "Don't do it. I will replace him with a sacrifice." Why Allah needed to send a sacrifice, and the sacrifice is coming from heaven. Any Muslim can tell us what about Allah? He bring a sacrifice from the stable of uh, Abraham. Abraham have a lot of sheep, a lot of why from heaven, and why the sacrifice is called mighty sacrifice? Is that God? Because in Arabic it says "fadaynahu bidhabhin azim." Azim is one of the names of Allah. Right, uh, the guy who his name is Michael. Go and teach yourself how to be mature. You are an idiot. Get out of here. I do not need you to teach me my English, my friend, because as you see with my funny English, thousands of people, if not hundreds of thousands, they are reading my books, watching my videos with my funny English. So imagine if I, my English is perfect, what will happen? With the funny English, you are yourself sitting like a puppy listening to me. And yet my English is funny. Yet you are sitting there and you are wasting your time. Obviously, you are an idiot. If this guy have a funny English and he's doing this, what if his English like Shakespeare? Unbelievable. So here we have many questions no Muslim can answer. Where this sacrifice is coming from? From heaven. Allah have a farm in heaven. Allah have sheep in heaven. Allah growing cows and elephants and zarraf in heaven. Why Allah send it from heaven? No answer. Why it's called Adim? No answer. Adim. Allah himself a glorifying a sheep. It's a sheep. Any Muslim can explain to us how how big this sacrifice to Allah? Because when Allah Himself is calling this Azim, it's mean Allah is a glorifying. This is God, supposedly. If God is a glorifying a sheep, I mean, I I thought the sheep glorify God in Islam. The God He glorified the sheep. You know what I'm saying? No answer. All what they refuse about Christianity, you find the details about it in their stupid Quran. Allah giving sacrifice, Allah called the sacrifice holy, Allah called the sacrifice great, Allah Himself provide to Himself sacrifice. Allah will not accept sacrifice from down earth. 
otherwise why he is providing sacrifice for himself and then what happened to the sacrifice anyone knows Allah he sent the fire and the fire took the sacrifice and Allah he did that twice one with the children of Adam Cain and Abel and one with Abraham story as you see in the same story here you will see something contradict all of Islam Islam they say the Muslim they say to you Muhammad is from Ishmael don't they say that by the way this is not true the Muslim they say to you that Ishmael he married a woman Arab woman but if this is true Muhammad should not be an Arab because you follow always your father even the Quran says call them by the name of their father so the person in Islam belong to his father not to his mother so if the father is a Chinese the son will be Chinese okay Ishmael was what the father is Aramaic the mother is an Egyptian the son is an Arab <laughs> That's funny. Unbelievable. If I marry now from the Arab, all the Arab are my children. That's amazing. The Arabs already exist. They are established as a nation. According to Islamic books, if you have my book, The Deception of Allah, you will see that according to Muslims, Ishmael start learning Arabic at the age of 11. At the age of 11. According to Muslims. So how he can be the father of the Arab? And according to the Muslim books, Ishmael, he married from the tribe of Jaham. How he married from the enemy of Muhammad, the tribe, and Muhammad from there, from his seed. Let me make it simple for you. So imagine now we have Israel and we have Gaza. Gaza, there is the Arab, and Israel have the Jews. Ishmael, he went to Gaza and he marry an Arab woman and his children are the Jews <laughs> That's a good one Everything the Muslims they reject Their Quran prove them wrong and show them how stupid this cult is and then the Quran confirm that all the prophethood will be from Isaac. Do you see it? Or I am saying that? Am I, am, I, am I making things up? Guys, am I making things up? Does it say in front of you, in front of your eyes, the Quran confirming that Allah He made from the children of Isaac all the prophethood? Do you see it? Do you see it, Abdul? So how Ishmael is a prophet? The Quran is speaking in order. Allah, he gave Abraham, Isaac. From Isaac, all the prophethoods. How do you explain to me that? So where is Muhammad from? Based in your Quran, as you see in the front of you, in order for Muhammad to be a prophet of God, he have to be from Isaac. The Quran says so, not me. How this can be the book of God? The book of God saying that in order to be a prophet, according to Islam, you have to be a Jew. As simple as that. Anyone?
Now going back to the ritual. When Allah He order Abraham to slaughter his son, when Allah He order Cain and Abel to give sacrifice, is that a ritual or not? You will notice that we as a Christians we don't have really rituals. Those in the Old Testament, the story of Adam and his children, the story of Adam and Eve, the story of uh, Abraham, but the Bible speaks about the sacrifice which Abraham gave. In the Quran, we have additional more stories about sacrificing. And obviously, the Muslims who reject sacrifice, all their religion is based on sacrifice. What about the Quran? Once one of you sent me, uh, I think, uh, no, no, actually not, not in video. This is was I was doing a seminar. It was a Muslim actually. It's a Filipino Muslim, and he said to me, "Well, how you explain to me? Uh, I, I spoke about slavery. Said how you uh, explain to me the Quran says." That if you commit sin, if you don't go to pray, if you don't do Hajj, if you don't do etc., you have, if you kill a believer, the way to be forgiven from that sin is to do what? Is to free a slave. Chapter 4, verse number 92. You see, many people, they are naive. They do not know how to read. And knowing about how to read is not about how to read letters. Maybe you can read English better than me. But obviously, many people do not know how to read yet. This is, was not a reward to the slaves. That was a punishment to the Muslim. <laughs> are you getting my point? A Muslim, he should not free a slave unless he do something wrong. And because this is a society of slavery, they cannot live without their slaves. So he said to them, you know what? If you kill a Muslim, I will force you to free a slave. And then the, no, 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 please, please, no. Oh boy, I have to free a slave now. It is a penalty. This is not a reward. This is not because Muhammad is worried about freeing slaves. This is about Muhammad punishing you for doing something he ordered you not to do. Muhammad, he knew what they hurt, what hurt them most. What hurt most for those Muslims is to free a slave. Otherwise, why you have a slave anyway? You know what I mean? If Muhammad is against slavery, why he have to wait until somebody do something wrong and then we force him to free a slave? And what if somebody don't have a slave to free? You have to go and buy one. <laughs> you know, if we say to everybody, I will give an example. In America, American they celebrate uh, uh, a, a, a special occasion have to do with the American. It's called Thanksgiving. What is Thanksgiving? When the first immigrant they came to USA, they they grow their goods in the field, and from the first fruits they got from that field, they made a celebration called the Thanksgiving, thanking God for what He gave them. Beautiful. This has nothing to do with the teaching of the Bible, as long as much it is just about the Bible saying you thank God for what He gave you. So it is biblical, but it's like it's not mentioned in the Bible. So. If I say now, if I am a prophet, in the day Christian prince he was born, everybody have to buy a turkey and slaughter it. What will happen? People, they need to go and buy turkey. So Muhammad here is doing two things in the same time. Muhammad is a slave owner. He sells slaves. One of the names of Muhammad is Ba'i al-Abid, the slave trader. 
so you commit sin you have to come to me and buy a slave so you can free and then after they free them Muhammad he captured them again and he freed them and I can show you tons of stories where Muhammad he makes slaves again after they've been freed people they free them Muhammad he make them slaves again in the city of Al Basra I don't know how many of you uh, watch a, 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 a funny movie for kids. It's called Sinbad. Sinbad, right? In Arabic, we call him Sindibad. That city, my friend, is the city of slaves. Not like I show it to you in the in the video, so beautiful. In that city, there's nobody live there except slaves. And when we speak about slaves now, we are speaking about black slaves. The whole town is black, African, captured, sold, enslaved raped tortured in the middle of the caliphate state you can go right now and search in google for something is called the revolution of the zinj zinj in arabic is the negro the negroes according to the story the black people they made the revolution because they became the majority imagine how much slaves they have to the point the average of population is like 10 to 1, which means 10 black African to 1 Arab, if not more. So this was not an order of Muhammad because he's a nice guy for What about Muhammad freeing his slaves? Muhammad, he passed away, he died. Actually, he was killed by poison. And it's still Bilal. Have you how many times we heard Muslims speaking about Bilal? Do you know that the first you know, black his name is Bilal? Okay, who's black Bilal? Tell me please about Bilal. Bilal is a poor Ethiopian slave. Muhammad died and still Bilal is a slave. Why Muhammad did not free Bilal? Do you know who is the first one who called Allahu Akbar? Bilal. But do you know why? Because the white Arab man he will not do it. They ordered the poor black slave. Hey, slave, go. Go to the roof and say, Allahu Akbar. For him in the morning, the guy, he shout, Akbar, and the Arab, the masters are sleeping. This is the job of the slave. Everything the Muslim they try to present to you is upside down. Now we continue with the rituals. What about going around the Kaaba and kissing the black stone? And you are talking about pagan. I mean, who is, look who is talking. Show me one thing in Christianity is pagan. Do we have stones to kiss? You might say to me, I saw some Christians kissing a picture or a status, but this has nothing to do with Christianity. People they do what they, whatever they want. There's people who sleep around, there's people who do gambling, there's people who do drugs, there's people who kill, there's people who rape. But what does this have to do with Jesus? Christianity is what Jesus said. The Bible says in the book of Genesis, from the beginning, make no image from what is above in heaven or down in earth. And those images about to worship. Anyone he worship images or statues, he is going astray. He is disobeying God. As simple as that. But you Muslims, you have a prophet who taught you that the black stones can forgive your sin just by touch it. There's two stones in the Kaaba. If you touch them, they forgive your sin. Why? Any Muslim can tell us why? This website sometimes it doesn't help. All right, let us start with the rituals. Look at this stupid statement of Muhammad. We were with the messenger of Allah, P B B U H. When he asked, "Is any one of you is able to earn a thousand good deeds?" Okay, how we can earn a thousand good deed? Tell us, a Prophet. Are you ready, guys, to get a thousand good deeds? what we do look at this madness one of those present ask how how can a one 
earn thousand good deeds a day it's like one thousand calorie the prophet replied saying you say subhanallah one thousand one hundred times what the heck this is how people they earn deeds <laughs> Subhanallah, 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 Subhanallah. Guys, somebody count, please. Subhanallah, 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 Subhanallah. Christian Prince, now the meter is going up. His deed is going up. Subhanallah, 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 Subhanallah. Okay, now I have like a hundred deed. Subhanallah, Subhanallah, Subhanallah. What the hell? Who is the stupid here? So if somebody is a child molester, he says Subhanallah one hundred time. Allah give him one one thousand one one thousand deeds. And you are talking about rituals, isn't it? This is a ritual. Just a person saying words, he get deeds. You see, in Afghanistan, people don't speak Arabic and don't know how to read Arabic, because Muhammad he he said, uh, according to the Muslims, that if you if you point your fingers at the Quran. If your lips act if you are speaking Quran if you, if you don't know how to say it Allah give you deeds so what the Muslims in Afghanistan they do they move their finger over the text they don't know how to read Arabic because they believe by doing that they are getting deeds uh, get us get deeds uh, wrap your finger over the Quran all over and they flip the pages let us continue All right. Read carefully with me. Abu Abdurrahman, why do I only see you touching those two corners? Somebody asking a companion of the Prophet. Because he noticed that this guy is touching those two corners. Which corners? He said, I heard the Messenger of Allah say, touching them erase sin if 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 and i had i i say here i heard him say whoever go around seven time it's like he free a slave okay hold you hold, hold on hold on so now muhammad he told them a punishment free a slave but here there's something behind the story if the one who commits sin is one of the free of the friends of Muhammad, Muhammad he said to him, Don't free the slave, go around the Kaaba seven times, and that is equal to free a slave. <laughs> the bent, the bent who is doing the, the one who is doing the bad thing, supposedly. So if you are a friend to Muhammad, he will say to you, Oh, don't free a slave, it's okay, go around the Kaaba huh? seven times. So who's going to free a slave now? Nobody. We go around the Kaaba seven times. I mean, this is how very easy. Choose one, which one you want. Here we go, Muhammad saying, going around the Kaaba seven times is equal to free a slave, so nobody will free a slave no more. And why if I touch stones, those Touching those stones will forgive my sin. What I did exactly? What is the special power in those stones? Any Muslim have an idea? You just say to us that we are the pagan. Who is the pagan? We don't believe if we touch stones, God forgive our sin. We don't. Even if we believe in Jesus. Because Jesus said, not everyone believe in me will enter the kingdom of my father, but the one who do his will. So believe and doing both have to go together. Jesus don't accept hypocrites. You Muslims are hypocrites. You do all kind of sin. You go around the Kaaba seven times. Your sin is forgiven. You touch the two corners of the stones, the black stone and the Yemeni corner, your sin is forgiven. I mean, this is hypocrisy. So what you are saying to me, do a rituals, will delete your sin not doing good what what is the good you did by touching a stone Muhammad in different hadith he said 
doing good deeds will erase the bad deeds. This is the deed he's talking about. This is a good deed. Going around the black stone, touching the black stone. This is a good deed. Saying subhanallah 100 times. This is a good deed. Saying alhamdulillah 33 times. This is a good deed. Now, who is the Muslim who tell us why if I touch the stone, Allah forgive my sin? And yet you Muslim, you say you are not pagan and you worship one God. Is your God Allah the stone? Who is the one who forgives sin? The stone or Allah? If you say Allah, then how Allah power is in the in the touching of the stone? Is the stone is part of Allah? Last time we, we spoke, a Muslim called me and he said the hadith about it says that Allah, uh, the, the black stone is the right hand of Allah is weak, is da'if. Mm. So who care? Da'if, strong, I don't care. You Muslim says that. And here we go, it's proven. Because if that hadith is da'if, this hadith is not. And let us say all of them are da'if. You Muslims, all your religion is da'if. The Quran is da'if. What this is da'if is about? Because the Muslims are ashamed of the stupid things in the Quran and in the Hadith, so they start saying da'if. Anything they don't like, they say it's da'if. If you go and watch, there is a sheikh, his name is Sheikh Hamza. He says, there's an attack in da'if, Hadith, da'if. The fact is da'if does not mean it's, it's, it's funk. It pass. It pass. That's why it's called da'if. It's a, it have a rank. <laughs> Who is the pagan here? Bowing down to a stone. Oh, and we don't bother the stone. Okay, we know what I mean. Okay, well, hold on. Oh, yeah, this is this is the one who forgive your sin. Stop lying. Oh, we don't worship the stone. So why you are why the stone will forgive your sin? I challenge any Muslim to tell me what is the power behind this stone. Why, if I touch it, my sin is forgiven? And what about the Yemeni corner? Simply, the Yemeni corner is a stones or rocks being brought from the temple of Al Makkah. The temple of Al Makkah is a temple of the moon god in Yemen. There is many Kaaba. Every town have a Kaaba, and in order to build the Kaaba, they have to bring some holy stones. And what makes stones holy? Either they are coming from the space. Or they mix them with the milk of the sheep, like mud, and they make a stone with rituals, and then they pray on it. If you go in the hadith, you will find the following. We used to worship stones. You still. You see the history? And here you will see the history of the black stone. Where is the stone believe is coming from? This is what the Arab believe all their life. We used to worship stones. And when we found a better stone than the first one, we would throw the first one and take the, the later. Do you see it? Do you see it, guys? This is where the black stone is coming from. They go. They find the strange stone in the desert. It's coming maybe from the space or something, or look weird. They make it as God. They worship it. A week after, a year after, they find a better stone. They throw the first one, and they worship the second one. And not only that, what if they could not find a stone? What they would do? Look at this. But if we could not get a stone, then we would collect some earth, which means dirt, and then they bring a sheep and milk that sheep over it. And they perform tawaf. Do you see where tawaf is coming from? Tawaf is going around the Kaaba. This is what tawaf. Tawaf is walking, circle, it's circulating around something. Do you see it? So we bring some sheep milk and we make it, mix it with the mud. 
and then we go around it. Am I making things up? And this is Sahih Bukhari. What do you want to say to me? This week? it's weak. Say it, say it, say it's weak. See, I want to hear it. Huh? Uh huh. Somebody is saying weak. No. What a madness. Guys, we should say thank you for uh, our brother here, Phil Horea, because he is the always, always the one who posts links for you, correct? If you notice in the text, in the uh, and uh, all over, you know, he, this guy he's trying his best to help you. Like now, I'm showing something on screen. This guy he go and look for it. So we should say thank you, all right? This guy is doing like as if he is working with me, but the fact he's doing everything volunteer, you know. So uh, uh, we should say thank you for this man because always volunteer. Nobody ask him. He go, he find you the reference. He search for them. He post them there. This is take a lot of work. I just mentioned it. He posted for you. Uh, how we can answer this? How we can answer this? This is what the Arab is about. So Islam is not a new religion. Absolutely not a new religion. It is the same cult of the Arab pagan worship. What about as Safa and Al Marwa? Anyone knows what as Safa and Al Marwa is? Who is the Muslim when I tell us what is as Safa and Al Marwa? As Safa and Al Marwa, it was two small hills where the Arab they placed two statues of a male and a female. And supposedly, those male and female, they have sex with each other in the Kaaba. So Allah, He made them rocks. I saw this movie before in the 1000 night story about the whole town became rocks. What is the history of Al Safa according to Muslims? When Muhammad he approved Al Safa and Al Marwa to be practice of Islam, the Muslims they reject. He said, What are you talking about? This is pagan. You told us we should not be pagans. Look what Muhammad he said to them because Muhammad is a hypocrite man. He knew that the Safa al Marwa is something the Arab they like. So he was afraid if he say no, don't do it, he will lose people. So he said, read carefully. Behold, Safa and Marwa are among the ritual of Allah. So if those who visit the house in the season or at the other time, should compass them round it, it is no sin in them. What the heck? Why Allah is saying to the Muslims is not a sin to go around and a Safa and Marwa? What the point of this Safa and Marwa thing? If Islam is about worshiping God and He is in heaven and He is the only one, so why now we go around a Safa and Marwa? What the point? Isn't it this is a stupid madness? What this ritual is about, and why it's called as Safa and Al Marwa? Allah He named it this way, or this is the name used by the Arab? It have to do with the sexual intercourse of two individual. In order to understand this, because the Muslim they might say to you, "Ah, oh, this is not true." It doesn't say that. We can go right now, chapter 2, verse 158, and read the interpretation. Read and laugh. Read carefully, guys. This is not me saying that. This is not me saying that. When this is was revealed, 
saying that there is no sin to do tawaf, which means circumulating around the Kaaba, around the, the, the Safa and the Marwa. So now we not not only we have to go around the Kaaba, we have something additional which the Arab they practice before Islam. What is that? It is to go between them seven times. And how they go between them? It's like jogging, not walking. You have to jog. This is how you go around the Kaaba too. Like slow and fast walk. It's not running. It's like between. Seven times. Okay. So when this was revealed, it was about what? It was because the Arab, they rejected that. Let me show you another interpretation so we can get better in, in understanding. Uh, let us go to Asbab al Nuzul. Hold on. The book of Asbab al Nuzul means the verses, the reason for the verses to come down. All right. Aisha who said this verse was revealed about a peak of a group of people From the helper who is the helper they are Ansar they call them helper which means they are Muslims who help the Prophet Before Islam they used to make Hajj to Manat and were forbidden from going between as Safa and Al Marwa When they want to do Hajj again with Allah Messenger, Allah bless him and give him peace. They mentioned to him this because they like it. We like the two that suffer. Since we became Muslims, we cannot do it, but we like a suffer and marwa. So Allah He revealed, look at this evil man. Look at this evil man. He was not interested in the Safa and Marwa until that group or this group of people who they are pagan Arab who became Muslims. Said to him, well, now we forbid us from Asaf al Marwa, but we like Asaf al Marwa. Can we do it, please? Muhammad, right away, his God is ready. So Allah revealed this verse saying that it's not sin to go around Asaf al Marwa, it is from the rituals of Allah. You see how we switch the religion in a second? Just because some group they said we like it, he was afraid if he said no, those guys will leave him. And he needed he need them big deal. So Allah revealed the verse and look what it says here from 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 Abu Bakr from 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 etc say that Aisha she said Anas ibn Malik we dislike going between as Safa and Marwa because they were the shrines of Quraysh oh, oh. in the pre-Islamic period this is a pure pagan practice and we abandoned them in Islam so it was abandoned in Islam so what happened suddenly what happened is clear it's in the front of you al ansar they said to muhammad we like them we've been forbidden from doing as safa al marwa we want to do as safa al marwa we want to go around them we want to do the worship the normal practice we do when we used to be pagans so muhammad he gave them a license saying okay go ahead for a Safa and al Marwa, suddenly a Safa and al Marwa became from the ritual of Allah, the God of Muhammad. Why? And there's no explanation. Where is the explanation of Muhammad? Why a Safa and al Marwa is from the ritual of Allah? You see, Muhammad, he do not need to explain anything. He just say this is from the ritual of Allah, and people they go blindly, <laughs> because he knew those Arab they like it. And you speak about pagan when you are the pagan even Allah in the heaven he have a house and there is 70,000 angel enter that house every day they do tawaf <laughs> even pagan even paganism is in the heaven of Islam not only in earth there is a Kaaba, there is a Kaaba in heaven and they are connected supposedly. One of the Muslim TV show, 
they say that the American always the American discover things the American when they went to the moon they discover an x-ray coming from the Kaaba all the way to the end nobody knows where me the American to discover that Abdul I mean why you keep lying to people what x-ray x-ray is going up okay let me let me make it simple for you let me turn uh, Google <clears throat> You know, in this cult, you you know you say you say a lie and you repeat the lie, and after repeating the lie like many times, you believe the lie it became a part of your life. Like somebody fooling himself, he believes he's rich, so he tell his friends, "I'm rich, I'm etc." And then he start acting like as if he's rich. He think he's rich because he's proud about nothing. Let me open uh, Google. <coughs> To show you how stupid this lie is about the x-ray and by the way nobody discovered the x-ray except the american the russian did not see it even the muslims now they have satellite what can you take a picture for us for the x-ray only american they can discover it only american as usual and then the american the guy the abdul in the tv he said and the american when they went to the moon they published that in the internet for 17 days and because they fear that many people they will convert to Islam if they learn this, they took it off. At that time, there was no internet, Abdul. What do you mean published in the internet? Go and see when the internet first time became public. Are you stupid or what? But for the sake of argument, just for Allah, let us say it's for Allah. There is a program, it's called for Allah. And that is Islam. This is Mecca. Hmm? This is Mecca here, you see. This is the Kaaba. <clears throat> to believe that there is an X-ray as the Muslim, they spread their false fiction, going up all the way to Allah, in order for that to be true, that means the following. And here you will see the lack of intelligence and intellect. So let us make the Kaaba facing up, because they say, the x-ray is going up I like that okay we go up <laughs> so the x-ray is going up but Abdul in case you do not know after 12 hours the x-ray is going to be here so where is the house of Allah from that direction or this direction And the Kaaba will be here. And the Kaaba will be here. I mean, it's moving. The earth is going around itself. So what is the X-ray is going to be? If the X-ray is connected to the house of Allah, which is above, which above? <laughs> that can work only if the earth is a flat. But however, more than 70% of the Muslims, they cannot accept that the earth isn't a flat because the Quran confirmed tons of times that the earth is a flat. Actually, as long as we are speaking about the Kaaba, a very clear additional proof that Muhammad and Islam believe in the flat earth is the following. If this is here, Let's book a button mark. If this is here, Mecca. All right. How somebody he live here, he can face Mecca. His prayer have to come like an arrow, like a missile, to come to Kaaba. How you can face Mecca? But the reason Muhammad he said, you face Mecca. Because the Quran and Muhammad and the Muslim believe for centuries and centuries that the earth is flat, so it's possible, why not, to face the Kaaba? Otherwise, it's impossible. If you live in America, in order to face Mecca, you have to put your head in the, in the, in the toilet seat. And just to show you how funny it is, the Muslims, when they build their houses, they do not allow you to put the toilet seat facing Mecca 
you're haram. How you can face Mecca, you idiot? <laughs> it's haram, brother. It's haram. According to the news, just a year ago, I think it's a year ago, last year, the, the people of Indonesia, and I don't know which country too, they found that when they were praying as a direction for the prayer was not their prayer was not facing mecca it was facing africa so they were praying in this direction this direction where is uh, where is indonesia I think I got it wrong. This is not Indonesia. We have to go. Hold on. What is the capital of uh, Indonesia? Let us search for the capital. Let me first be uh, confirm that this is what happened. Uh, brain, the wrong direction. Okay. Uh, if, uh... Try to find the news so I can show it to you. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to remember what was the news title. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Guys, I told you I'm not making things up. Hold on. What is the title? Indonesia Muslims turned prayer back to Mecca after 1,000 1, mile mistake. What is the mistake? 1,000 mile. But still, this is very stupid anyway. I mean, how you can face Mecca anyway? I mean, I now after the correction, can you really face Mecca? It's impossible. So all those hundreds of years, the Muslims in Indonesia, they were praying to the wrong direction. Why Allah did not send them an inspiration? Thank you, Kuffar, GBS. Thank you, the Kuffar. It's the Kuffar who saved the ass of the Muslims. Otherwise, they are praying until now to the wrong direction. And why I need direction? Why I need to, what, what direction is that? Still, I cannot see. I cannot find anyone. I mean, you have to be stupid to believe that you are praying in direction of Mecca if you live in Indonesia. For a very simple reason, it's impossible. For the earth is not a flat. How you can face the direction of, 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 of Mecca? Mecca is in the other side of the earth. Well, look like we don't have Muslims here to call us. Hey guys, those who they are, you, any one of you, the ones who get my books already, don't forget please to make a review of both Six and Allah, volume number one and volume number two. I noticed that most of people, they, uh, you know, uh, they read the book, but they don't make review. So don't forget, please. I'm so glad that this book is very successful. A lot of people are reading it. And uh, let us see how many Muslims they will dare to make a comment against it.
and right now we are translating the book into German. So I hope the brother is working in that he can help it fast. So don't forget, please, to make a review when you are done with it. Any Abdul? All of Islam is based on ritual. Before you do a prayer, you have to wash your feet, you have to wash, etc. I mean, what kind of God he cannot accept you as you are? You will make God and an, an holy. Even Muhammad he said, if a person he fought, why why a Muslim he fought, by the way? According to Muhammad, Muslims they do fart during the prayer because shaitan he take hair from his ass. I mean, have you ever heard of a scientific prophet? More than Muhammad, Shaitan, take care from your ass. Okay, you pray five times a day. Hmm? I want a Muslim to call me right now and swear by Allah that he feel that somebody playing with his ass, his anus specifically, taking hair from there during the prayer. If you don't feel that, that's when your prophet is a liar. Any Muslim want to bear witness for this? Let me find the hadith. <laughs> and thank God I'm not a Muslim, man. I don't want anyone to touch me there. Shaitan, he take hair from your ass. And by the way, Muslims, why you don't translate those hadith? I mean, why, why we don't find them in uh, in English? I mean, are you trying to hide something? Here we go. This is the official government website of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Hadith number one one. I will post the link for you guys. One one five zero two. Hmm? The book name Musnadu Ahmad. The Prophet said, "Inna sallallahu alaihi wasallam qal, Inna shaytan yati ahadakum wa huwa fi salatihi." فيأخذ شعرة من دبره فيمدها فيرى أنه قد أحدث فلا ينصرفنا حتى يسمع صوتا أو يجد ريحا. Translation: The Prophet said that Satan he come to each one of you when he is in his prayer and he take a hair, a single hair from his anus, from دبره, from his anus, and he straight the hair out. Like he's now he's putting it right, you know, like he, was, he maybe he put his foot in your ass and now he is holding the hair and he is trying to pull it out and he straight it out, taking it off, and then he see, which means he witness that he, which means the Muslims, he farted, but the shaitan still will not leave unless it's confirmed to him until he see, until he hear your fart and he smell it. You believe it? This is a prophet of God. Do you really Muslims believe in this garbage? Shaitan taking hair from your anus? Okay. How many hair in your anus you have? If Shaitan take one hair every time you pray, at least one hair to until and do you fart each time you pray, Muslims? Be honest with me. Huh? Oh, I have the, the book there. Hold on. I keep forgetting those things. Any comment?
That is Islam. Stupidity versus stupidity. There's nothing. There's no. There's there's nothing intelligence in this religion. It is based on stupidity. Now, who is the Muslim one? The Hadith in Arabic. Who of you want the hate in Arabic, guys, about shaitan taking hair from the anus of the Muslims? Nobody want it? Okay. I was going to give it to you. I'm afraid. I'm afraid, my friend. This is one of the reasons. Uh, if I don't want to convert to Islam. Imagine you convert to Islam to worship Allah, and what happens? Shaitan play with your anus. Look at this cult. Muhammad he said when you go in the bathroom if you don't say the name of Allah shaitan and his wife they play with your anus I mean there is there is a terror of the anus everywhere look like shaitan doing that only to Muslims there's a video actually in uh, we we played before in YouTube uh, about what shaitan do to you when you enter the bathroom if you don't say the certain prayer you have to say a certain prayer otherwise shit you will be invisible if you say the prayer shaitan cannot see you at all you will become invisible totally I mean, I'm, this is what they believe. And the Sheikh in the, in the video, he said, this is the Hadith says, the Hadith says that, which means don't say I'm stupid, it's the Prophet who said that. So Shaitan, when you enter the bathroom, he play with your anus. Shaitan, you, you are praying now, Shaitan, play with your anus. If you are having sex with your wife, Shaitan, he round himself around your penis and he will be the one doing your wife. This is Islam. And this is the link. For those who like to save it in reference, for shaitan taking hair from the anus of Muslims. If I am a Muslim, the first thing I would do before I convert to Islam, I will put insurance over my anus, and I will make the insurance company pay money for every hair I lose. Shaitan sleep in your nose. I challenge any Muslim to say I'm lying. Look what Muhammad said, guys. Look like the, the every hole in the in the body of a Muslim is a target. The anus, shaitan play with it. He take here. The anus, shaitan, he put his screwdriver. Even he go inside your anus when you go in the bathroom. He black it. Shaitan, he sleep in your nose. Shaitan, he go inside your mouth and he piss there. Shaitan, he piss in your ears. I mean, what's wrong with, with Muhammad? There is no hole is left. Shaitan, he lick your belly bomb. Shaitan round yourself, round himself around your penis. Like what the heck? And this is the amazing Prophet Muhammad. If this is amazing, what is the stupidity he is about? If this is what is amazing. And not only that, Muhammad he continued, like as an example, he says that uh, Shaitan he fought. What the heck? Muhammad, he have a PhD in farting and bathroom. When Shaitan hears the call to prayer, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. Okay, what Shaitan is doing? He turn his back and break winds. What? <laughs> Are you sure, Muhammad? Yes, brother. Yes. Brother Prophet Muhammad, are you sure? Shaitan, he break with. I, sh I now I know why the beans are expensive sometimes because Shaitan is eating beans. How he can get all this farting from? I mean, imagine how many Muslims are praying. Shaitan, he break winds. Each time the Muslims they are praying, is that explaining why the mosque smells so bad? Is that explain why the Kaaba smell bad? You will find around the Kaaba two guards and they are they have a perfume in their hand. They spray, like the one you use in the bathroom, you know. Because it smells disgusting. People are sweating. I mean, you can imagine. And now we have additional reason. Shaitan is farting. I mean, look at this conspiracy. You see how evil the Shaitan Shaitan fart. The poor Muslim, he want to worship God, Shaitan fart, which means there's a connection between the fart of the devil and the Allah name. You say Allah, Shaitan fart. Shaitan fart, you say Allah. I mean, this is holiness.
What else? If I tell you what Muhammad said about shaitan, you will not believe it. Shaitan sleep in your nose. In your nose? I mean, the poor shaitan, he could not find a room in Las Vegas hotel or sleep between maybe uh, 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 like the arms of, of the most beautiful women. He is sleeping in my nose. My nose. Why? How big the shaitan is? Any Muslim can tell me? According to you Muslims, how big Mr. Shaitan? To the point he sleep in my nose. Any Abdul? This is why Muhammad, he ordered the Muslims that when you wake up from sleep, you have to blow your nose at three times. Why? Let me try to find the hate for you in our in English. Here we go. Allah Apostle breeze upon him said, When any of you wakes up from the sleep, reform evolution, he must clean his nose three times. You see that the Christians are the Trinity people, right? Why three times? What, what do you mean three times? Why three times? For the devil to spend the night inside his nose. <laughs> Evolution. What is the purpose of this evolution? Is to kick the nose, to kick the shaitan from the nose. <laughs> I mean, this is this is this is God. This is, must be God. Who who told Muhammad this information? Allah. Brother, there's nobody. This is the unseen. Only Allah knows the unseen. And this is a news given to Muhammad from the God of Islam, Allah. And you are telling me Islam is not a true religion? How Muhammad, he knew that shaitan sleep in your nose? How many of you ever heard this before? Nobody. I'm going to install a security camera in the front of my nose. Ah, I saw an article, the Muslim, they say that the Prophet, the Prophet, uh, he ordered the Muslims, it's about uh, the hygiene. Look, 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 look at the Muslims' fabrication. Uh, they say the Prophet, he forbid us from sneezing or yawning without putting our our hand on our mouth and they say this is because of hygiene is that true muslims or this is a lie is that really the reason Or because shaitan he piss in your mouth if you open it. You see how they fabricate? They try to make what Muhammad said about putting your hand in the front of your mouth is about science. When the fact it is, about shaitan he piss inside you he piss in your mouth he go inside you actually not only in your mouth let me see if i can find the hadith in english here too the problem in this website they they they, they don't translate all the hadith especially the very stupid ones extreme stupid ones and here we go we can't find it um let us see if we can find it still.
Let us try something else. Oh, this one is about shaitan, he pissed in your ears. And by the way, this is proven to be scientifically correct. Muhammad is ex explaining here why sh why you find walks in your ears. What is the explanation for the walks? And because Muhammad is connected to God, and he is the only one who can give you answers which is absolute true, he got the answer. Because shaitan, he urinate in your ears and this is proven to be scientifically correct uh, let us see why you do yawning why people do yawning Muhammad have a scientific explanation for the yawning yawning is from shaitan Because he wanna gain, you know, he wanna go and get inside you. He wanna piss in your mouth. The prophet said, "Allah likes sneezing and dislike yawning." Have you ever heard of a god he likes sneezing? Do you have cold? If you have cold right now, you are making Allah happy. Actually, once this is many years ago, I opened a chat room and pal talk. It's called "Let us sneeze for the sake of Allah." This is the only God who likes sneezing. He loves sneezing. <laughs> Achoo. Allah now is so happy. He's, he's, he's happy. He's excited. Allah is so excited now. You sneeze, Allah have a party. You yawn, Allah is crying. He's yawning. <laughs> Allah, he, this, it says Allah dislike yawning. What it, what it does mean, dislike yawning? Explain to me, Muslims. When you say somebody dislikes something, isn't it that make me believe that Allah He get upset when we do yawning? And why Allah He do dislike yawning? Any Abdul? You see, the Muslims they are blind following a blind muhammad he says something that's it nobody want to say to himself what is this stupid thing how muhammad is a prophet and saying this yawning is an alarm from your body your body speak to you your body give you alarm the same as the car you have a light for the engine you have a light for the oil you have a light etc so your body give you signals and yawning is not bad it's your body giving you a signal that you are tired, you are sleepy. Sneezing is the same. What does this have to do with God? And what does this have to do with the shaitan? So now sneezing is from for, is, is Allah, he like it. And yawning is from the devil. Look what he said. When any one of you say sneeze, say Alhamdulillah. Like what? Why? It became obligatory upon every Muslim who hear him to respond and say, Yarhamukallah, may Allah have mercy on you. Like, why? Because he sneezed. And then Muhammad, he said, Yawning is from the devil. What, what? When one of you feel like yawning, he should restrain it. Fight it, my brother. Fight it. Don't. Uh, you lost. You did yawning. How you do that? How you are a true believer and you are yawning now? How you do that? Shame on you. You are a good believer. You pray to Allah five times a day and now you are yawning? How I'm going, what I'm going to tell my friend now? That I have a brother, he do yawning? What if somebody took a selfie with you now when you are yawning? You will make the family look horrible because yawning is from the devil and that's mean we have a devil in home. <laughs> and you are talking about rituals and stupidity? Who have better collection of stupidity more than your prophet?
you know I would like to see some of you cutting this part like we are speaking for the last 20 minutes maybe about those stupid things I would really appreciate it if some of you do some work and help us like cut the videos and make it smaller and share it around you know what I mean I know not many people care for doing some work you do not need to show your name you can make a fake account in YouTube just make a video share it you know do something do something to spread awareness between mankind this religion is dangerous Maybe we are laughing right now, but you will not be laughing when you see somebody coming with a knife to stab you in the restaurant for no reason except that you is a believing you are, you are an infidel. Yes, we are laughing at this cult, but this cult is dangerous, extremely dangerous. In the name of this cult, thousands of people are getting killed every day, every day. This is the devil. How you wanna how you wanna discuss with somebody he believe in this garbage? What you will say to him? What you will talk to him? What language we will use? What logic we will use? I give all my time to help people. Actually, all my day is to fight this cult. Like I finish now, I go to write back again about in my book. I'm trying to finish a book before I go to my coming trip. And by the way, we appreciate those people who help us in our in my trip, and they you know they help in donation because this is how you sponsor what we do. So I really appreciate people if they go and help us and they do uh, do their share if they can. The fight is big. And ignorance is the biggest disease a human being is suffering from. In Islamic countries, the majority of people until now do not know how to write, how to read. Go right now, do a little search. How many illiterate there is in Saudi Arabia right now in the year 2018? After all the oil they have, you will not believe it how big the number of people who cannot even read Arabic. Afghanistan, Pakistan, you name it. We always, you know, maybe sometimes people, they come here because it's it's funny, Christian Prince, he make us laugh, but this is not my friend. There's people, they are dying. This is literally true. There's people right now, the Muslims, they have slaves. Go and see what they are doing to those poor immigrants who they are trying to reach to Europe because of this stupid German counselor who said everybody is welcome. And now every poor person in Africa trying to cross the ocean, cross the sea, dying in the way and what they do the Arab as usual my people they capture them and they make them slaves this is reality it was happening before it is happening now who is the one who sold the black African to the white people in America it was the Arab Muslims Morocco the biggest market of slavery in the world Libya Right now, as we speak, there's tens of thousands. They are prisoners of slavery. And nobody speak about them. My friend, I am ashamed only of those who do shame. I'm not ashamed of an ethnic because not all the Arab, they do that. So when we say, this is you see that the problem is that religion is not an ethnic because an Afghani he believe in Islam he would do the same a German he believe in Islam he would do the same Islam is the disease is not your you know your ethnic uh, ethnic uh, human being is a human being but the second you became a Muslim you became something else you forgot your humanity you know when the Quran speak about Muhammad owning many slaves, raping many women, you will find any Muslim saying this is a shame. No. No Muslim country will sign the law against slavery. For this is against Islam, especially if it's an Islamic country who they are trying to practice Sharia. 
it's part of Islam. You cannot say is, is, is slavery, no to slavery. But slavery is one of the side of many side of ugliness in this cult. And you will notice the Muslims always when they speak to you, they speak to you depend where are you coming from. So if you are a redhead guy, they will not mention to you what the white man to the black man, what he did to the black man. They, they will not mention that. If you are a black person, they will say, ah, do you know what the, your fellow Christian, the white people did to you? Mm, do you remember? Do you remember when they broke your grandfather as a slave to America? Do you remember? And the poor guy, he's like, yeah, well, this is true. It's history, you know happen yeah so they try to make him have anger and make him excited bringing the past the, the ugly past to make him leave a Christianity but what does this have to do with the Christianity this is Islam and where is the truth go and do a little search you will find that all the slaves coming to America was sold by the North African Muslims who they are white In one palace of the Caliphate, Harun al-Rashid, there is more than 10,000 Billy Dancer. Dancer, those are not the cooking ones. Those are the beautiful girls just to dance for him and to have sex with him. There's no way he can have sex with 10,000. Can anyone explain to me after all the slaves we have in the Middle East, we just mentioned to you, you can go and search right now for the revolution of the Zinj, which means the revolution of the Negro. Hundreds of thousands of black people brought to Iraq as slaves. Why now we have zero black? Do you understand what I'm saying, guys? In the past, the white, they brought slaves to America. Is that correct? Yes. But today we have black people. They are not killed. We have them, right? They are citizen, and just a few years ago, we have a president who is a black man. And this is what I like about America. The white man, he voted for the black man to be a president because the black people, they cannot make anyone be president alone unless the white people, they are the majority. That's a very good sign. But right now, how many black people we can find in Iraq? Zero. What happened to them? When we say in a city like Al Basra, we have a couple of hundreds of thousands at that time in one city alone. So now we should have in Iraq maybe 10 million black people, but there's zero. What happened? They killed them all. When the Zinj, they made the revolution, they slaughter everybody. You go to Syria, there's no black. What happened? The Amawiyin, they used to have a lot of black slaves, zero black. Zero. Zero black in Turkey. Zero black in Jordan. What happened? Where is the black people? What happened to them? They've been slaughtered. That is the truth. And until now in Saudi Arabia, there is a black slaves. And yet they say to you that Islam is a religion for everybody. What religion for everybody? Even Allah in the Quran, he says, everybody will go to heaven, Allah will make him white. You remember? We mentioned that many times. The day Allah will make black faces and white faces, what will happen? There is two angels. Actually, the, the, the whitening process is, it, it will happen twice. In the judgment day, Allah will send a beast. It's called a Jassasa. A Jassasa is a beast. Will come from the ground, have the stick of Moses and the ring of Solomon, and will hit the, 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 the believer in his face and will make his face white and will hit the disbelievers in his face and he will make his face black and then all of him will become black. Those are slaves, my friend. Those are not black Saudi. There's no black Saudi. Those are slaves. 
through time they got their freedom maybe their master freedom so they got citizenship and now they live but those are slaves and the reason they have them the reason they have them because until not long time ago actually until now they have black slaves but when when in Iraq and those countries decide they don't want the black no more so they destroy them after what happened in the revolution they found that having a lot of a black people is very dangerous they can take over and you see the racism of Islam is amazing if you are a European and you take over them they have no problem as an example when the Albanian they took over Egypt for more than a thousand years but they are not Arab and they are not Egyptian they are Albanian the Muslims have no problem with it because they are white and they are Muslims. Why Muhammad did not make Bilal, name Bilal to be a caliphate for him? What's wrong with Bilal? There is a problem. He's a black. Do you remember when Muhammad he said about the black people, the, the, the raisin head? This is about Bilal. He's making fun of him. He's making fun of him. He used him to the war to go and die for him. You obey him in the war, but not outside, it's just in the war because now he is good in fighting. After Muhammad died, Bilal he went to Abu Bakr. He said, If you bought me for the sake of Allah, free me for the sake of Allah. If you bought me for yourself, keep me for yourself. Because it was Abu Bakr who bought the, 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 the slave and he gave him as a gift to Muhammad. So my friends, Islam is a very clear, you do not need to be a genius to discover that this is a very ugly cult disrespect human being for his race it's a white supremacist religion it have a lot of hateful teaching against non muslims it discriminate women in the quran it says you can beat women chapter 4 verse number 34 it doesn't matter how muslim they try to change the translation we can get them busted easy you can have sex with the children even in heaven there is no justice even in heaven there is a slavery you see, when the Muslim try to deny slavery, when you promise me 80,000 women and 80,000 little child to serve me as the Muslim claim to serve you, huh? I don't believe it's about serving, it's about something else because the Quran described them that they are so beautiful children and they are white like pearls. Isn't it this is slavery? I pray to God and because I pray to God, Allah will slave for me in a slave for me 80,000 women and 80,000 child even in heaven there is a slavery it, when a Muslim he says to me those children are going to serve you do you like to be a servant for somebody for eternity at least in earth you are a servant you are a slave for until you die in heaven no it's eternity In heaven is a child abuse and slavery for children. That's what you are saying to me. Children, they will be serving me for eternity. Why? Where is justice? Is it justice that they will say to you, all oh, those, some hadith says that those are the children of the Christians and the Jews. If, 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 where is justice? And how Allah can bring all those, how you can make those children for the, the Muslim. If every Muslim will have 80,000. And they play music for you when they speak about heaven. Brother, when you go to heaven, in the front door of the heaven, there is two angels. They will serve you to drink. One will make you have a diarrhea. 
and you will have deliver all the hate and the guilt and the bad things from the life God give you water for diarrhea and then they give you the second drink you drink it you became very white like what the heck I thought I am already white because the 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 the, the just sasa that hit me with a stick Isn't it, this is what the chapter 32 uh, 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 the, the chapter of the ant speak about verse number 82 27 82 Again, I will be white again again Allah will give you whitening to be sure you will not enter heaven and you have a color you have to be very white I mean we can continue about this forever anyway guys I think we have enough for today I hope you guys you did enjoy it don't forget to please again those who got my books to make a review in uh, Amazon we keep asking people to make a review I mean I don't see a point you buy the book but you don't want to make a review why by the way you can change your name when you post in Amazon you can post as an Amazon customer you can name yourself whatever you want because maybe some of you don't want their name to show in Amazon when you post they give you a choice they ask you actually you want to post what what you want to call yourself you can call yourself uh, a Sony TV you can call yourself anything so if this is your concern change that post name they make you make a review preview for your post before you post it it's going to show what name is showing it's going to show everything you can change that so if this is your concern it's very easy so please make a review let people see what those books is about any books you have all my books you know it doesn't matter what because if you have the six and Allah or the last or the one previously or whatever all my books if you have them don't forget to make a review because and an honest review don't say it's a fantastic book if it is not we don't do what the Muslims do we are not Muhammadan say what you don't like say what you like I know most of you uh, um, you know will say to me there is some uh, like English uh, mistakes my friend you know that English is not my first language so that will be very normal actually if the book is perfect in English it's mean it's not me who wrote it <laughs> you know what I mean if the book is like the book of Shakespeare that's mean obviously it's not Christian Prince who wrote the book as simple as that so but the the the, the thing is the important is those little mistakes will not make a difference because still you have the perfect meaning very clear and that will not affect space comma you know uh, uh, that will not really change anything from your side still you understand very well still you get the message still you get the reference everything is so clear and this is the important for me i'm not writing a book in english i am not an english person english is not my first language so it's very normal to have little mistakes here and there and uh, always always when you read a book I advise you and this is an advice from me it's up to you it doesn't matter what book try to imagine the story in order to understand it and that will show you how ugly it is or how beautiful it is now don't go too much into imagination when you are reading my books six and Allah because that will lead you into temptation <laughs> don't do that in that book don't go there okay yeah you enter the heaven and there is a line of women in two rivers in the river they are singing for you okay close your eyes and imagine you are in a boat and now in the right side there is a line of women they are singing for you and they are very white women in the left side of the of the river the bank of the river there's another huge line thousand of women they are singing for you i mean isn't it beautiful so close your eyes and imagine how funny the story is it's good sometime to imagine for it show us how stupid this cult is it's a cartoon this is not a book for i'm talking about islam the books of islam is not a books for adult it's book for people who have little brain even so speaking about sex yes but still this is not for adult this is for people who have a very limited tiny brain who don't want even to use that little tiny part of it for you have to be really mentally ill to believe in this garbage 
I want to say thank you for being here and I hope we will meet again I will try to do it tomorrow if not Saturday but feel free to subscribe you will be notified join us in Facebook join us in patreon and I, I really appreciate those who help us with, with donations uh, especially and you know I have a trip in a few weeks from now and by the way even when I have my trip I will post videos and we will share with you um, uh, you know we the same as last time you know last time when I went to China I went etc to Philippines everything is the same you guys you were receiving actually videos when I was there more than when I was here <laughs> so I would do my best always to be stay in touch and God is good and I'm so glad to receive messages from people in Facebook and Twitter and etc saying that we left Islam I'm so happy for those people and this is a price that's for me when you see somebody saying to you I left Islam you cannot really explain the feeling and then those who left Islam if they want to accept the Christ the Messiah you are always invited to come and call me and ask me but I cannot push you to believe in something unless you are ready for it but the important is is to clean your mind from all the garbage it's like installing a new software in a computer but this computer is infected with a virus the first thing you need to do is to format and destroy the virus before you install anything otherwise the virus is there and Islam is nothing but a virus thank you very much for being here may the Lord bless you all and until we see you soon again Christ is Lord and Islam is false and God bless thank you